in this video, I'm going to talk about filters and delays. So I have a sound source here. Um, it is a noise pulse. So the noise object here, noise tilde, is like random, uh, but it's a signal object. So it generates random numbers at the sample rate between 1 and negative 1. Um, and so the result of that is white noise. Um, and it's just continuously outputting these as long as DSP is on. And so I've just put an amplitude envelope on that to make a pulse. And for a lot of these, I'm going to be using that. So the first filter that I want to talk about is a low pass filter. And the low pass filter in PD is LOP tilde. And a low pass filter is going to allow frequencies beneath uh, a cutoff frequency to come through unattenuated. And anything above that is going to be attenuated. I have two, two of these in series um, just so the effect is more pronounced. Um, you know, this is uh, a good way to combine for interesting effects. Um, the bright inlet for the low pass is going to be the cutoff frequency. Um, so if I do a 200, it'll set both of those to, to 200. Um, and now when I do the noise pulse, the same noise pulse through uh, this low pass filter, that's filtered compared to this one. And I can change that frequency. Um, and so those are just in accession to give a steeper cutoff. So um, the closer I want to get to a brick wall cutoff, I could use more of these low pass objects in series set to the, to the same cutoff. Um, or if I wanted to, to make kind of a different shape, I could give a different EQ shape. I could give, you know, this a different cutoff than this one and work with that. Similarly over here. The high pass filter in PD is HIP tilde, and it's going to allow the frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency to pass through unattenuated, and it's going to attenuate anything lower than the cutoff frequency here. So if I do, let's say, 8000 hertz. Okay, so those are pretty simple and we can create bandpass effects. You know, if we had a low pass and a high pass, if the low passes frequency was tuned to a higher frequency than the high pass, we'd essentially have a bandpass filter. But PD has a bandpass object built in, so that's BP tilde. And this one's a little different. It has a center frequency, and so instead of just a roll-off for lower frequencies for the high pass and a roll-off for upper frequencies for the low pass, uh, the bandpass is going to have a roll-off above and below the center frequency. And then the Q is going to determine how steep that roll-off is. We don't really have to stack these in series. If we want a steeper roll-off, we raise the Q. Say a center frequency of 1000 here. Now, if the Q is set to zero, that doesn't have any effect. So we have to give the Q a value. And the higher the Q goes, the more prominent the center frequency is. You also notice that the higher the Q, the softer the signal is overall because we're cutting away so much of the signal. 
depending on your sound sources and, and how you're shaping these sounds, this is the fundamentals of what's known as subtractive synthesis, which is we're taking a sound that is rich in overtones and we're choosing what to cut away. So that's subtractive synthesis. Now we have the VCF tilde object, stands for voltage control filter. So it's not actually voltage. Uh, the idea comes from a modular hardware synthesizer where we can use an LFO or some signal that changes over time to control parameters of the filter. Here in PD, we can control the center frequency. So the VCF is a lot like the bandpass, except for the center frequency can be controlled by an LFO or any kind of signal ramp. Um, this could be a V-line or a phaser. And I've got a cosine oscillator here. This oscillator is moving at two hertz. And since the values that are output are go from negative one to positive one, this object is doing multiplying by a thousand and adding a thousand to that result in one object instead of using a times tilde and a plus tilde. This is a variable vector. So signal is a vector. So the dollar sign V1, one inlet, uh, we're taking the value we're getting from oscillator, uh, the oscillator and multiplying it by a thousand. So negative 1000 to positive 1000. And then we're adding 1000 to that range. So zero to 2000. And then we set the Q the same way we do on the bandpass filter. And instead of a pulse here, I've got continuous noise. So there's no amplitude envelope. I just have an amplitude control. And so you hear this low frequency oscillator moving the center frequency of this bandpass up and down um, at two, two hertz. So um, I could change the speed of that. Three hertz would be faster. Those are the basic filters in PD. So now we're going to look at delays and delay networks. So using the same noise pulse here, I'm going to write it to a delay line. So this is an object called del write tilde for delay write. And then I have a name for my delay line. So we've seen names a lot. So this throw goes to, to a catch in a different window called bus. And our tables have names and lots of things have names in PD. So delay lines work the same way. I write to a delay line and I say how long that delay line is. Um, so this delay line is 1000 milliseconds long or one second long. And I give it a name. So Del write tilde and I call this one simple and it's one second long so if I put a noise pulse in there I get two noise pulses I tap the delay line with this del read tilde so delay read simple so I use the same name and it's got a default value of 500 so 500 milliseconds later, I hear another pulse. This delay line is one second long, which means anywhere under one second, I can tap that delay line. So I could have multiple taps here, um, 250, 500, 750, 999, 1000. I can't have two seconds because I said that this delay line is only one second long, but I can change where I read from. I can say 
250. Now I'm reading at 0.25 seconds into a delay line with a one second buffer. The max is one second. And if I try something higher than a second, I get one second. Now I can change the length of the delay line to two seconds. And I'm doing reading at one second from um, a delay buffer that is two seconds long. Um, but I can go, now I can go 1500, second and a half, um, and all the way up to, to two seconds. So that is a delay. A delay is a copy of a signal played at a different point in time. If we look at this, we can get to a situation where we can have feedback. And here I've done just that. So this patch it's the same noise pulse you could use a different signal here a sample or a synthesized sound but you're writing um, to a delay line and then here I'm reading from that delay line and then writing back into the same delay line so both this original signal and this copy are being written notice here that I am attenuating here because I know that there's going to be feedback. And this is really critical because feedback can be dangerous if you have a feedback cycle that is increasing or never decreases. Uh, it can build on itself. The things to watch for are loud original signals, short uh, read times. So the shorter the read time, the more likely multiple copies of the sound are going to stack on each other. And then attenuation. So having attenuation is, is critical for safety. Let's listen to this. So this is half second, um, same noise, noise pulse at 0.75 digital amplitude that we've been using. So there's feedback there. Um, each generation here is spaced out by half a second. So 200. So another thing to think about is the sustain of the original sound. If, if it's a really long sound, there's more likelihood that feedback will result in an increase in overall amplitude because the next generation of the sound is happening before the preceding uh, generation of feedback is over. Um, in this case, this is a sound that is 100 milliseconds long um, and has a 10 millisecond fade out and it's now spaced 100 milliseconds apart and we have attenuation of times 0.7 on each generation of feedback. So we think about what happens. We play the initial sound. We write it to a delay line. This reads from that delay line and then attenuates it and then writes it back to the same delay line, which then reads, then writes, then reads, then writes. And each time the pulse, the noise pulse here is being multiplied by 0 0.7. So if we cut that in half, we start to get an altered quality of the sound um, because we have exact copies of the sound and each generation is being played before the, uh, the previous generation of feedback has faded out. And so there's frequency cancellations and boosts that happen as a result of that. And that's called tone filtering. Another thing that happens is that 
because multiple copies of the sound are playing simultaneously, um, because our feedback generation starts before the previous one um, has faded out, the overall amplitude actually will be somewhat higher than this 0.75 of the original because we have multiple sounds playing at the same time. Uh, and then you get a sense of, of how you can get a situation where the feedback can, can increase in overall amplitude. So here we have one more noise pulse and instead of del read tilde we're using vd tilde and that's for variable delay and so this delay line I called variable so this one's called feedback this one's called simple one thing to watch out for is if you did have multiple delay lines and if I if I mix these up and accidentally read feedback from here um, you know if I cross my delay lines I can get unexpected spikes in amplitude and um, again be really careful with with feedback uh, especially using you know headphones your your personal equipment if you um, are able to use um, hardware attenuation so you can slowly turn your amplitude up and down start at zero and slowly turn it up while testing these things also start with really conservative values when you're attenuating between reads and writes you know start with a really low value and then um, increase to something that gets the effect that you want okay so here variable delay this is going to similar to the VCF filter this is going to allow us to um, use a signal to control the point in the delay line that we read from. And so if we're changing the point in the delay line we read from while we're playing the signal, it's going to sound like a change in speed. So here I've got a phaser. Phasers go from zero to one in a ramp motion repeatedly. So this is a sawtooth at a very low frequency. So this is a low frequency sawtooth oscillator. Again, I have this expression tilde object where I take the signal, the vector here, and I multiply it by 500. So instead of 0 to 1, I'm going 0 to 500, and then I add 500 to that. So then I'm going from 500 milliseconds to 1000 milliseconds in the buffer here. So I have a two second buf buffer and I'm going from the 500 millisecond mark to the 1000 millisecond mark repeatedly. So this is changing in real time. So let's listen to that. So I have different speeds at different generations. So this is also um, feedback so we can hear each generation here attenuated um, by 0.7 and depending on where I catch this phaser in its phase is it's going to sound different since this is always running and it's running slowly um, I'm gonna get a different effect a variable delay VD so it uses the same del right tilde object but in reading from it you use VD tilde instead of del read and that is so that you can change the point in which you read from the delay buffer in real time using a signal so another note here on delay networks is we can use a filter um, here I've used a high pass and a low pass to do attenuation of our delay network. So I have slight attenuation on each kind of generation of, of the feedback on each of these. You know, before I was attenuating 
multiplying by 0.7 or 0.8. Here I'm multiplying by 0.95. So it's slight overall attenuation, but then I'm also using high pass, low pass filter. Um, so here, successive generations of feedback will get repeatedly filtered. Let's listen to that at a lower time between each generation of feedback.